Right, okay, my apologies about that. So, uh, by the end of this evening, let like me say, uh, we're going to open up differences in key stage three and key stage four. We're not doing it live anymore, we're going to record and put it on afterwards. Um, coping with the mental pressures, like I say, there are a lot of stresses associated with GCSEs. Uh, revision, lovely word. Lovely word, revision, that all of a sudden seems to become really, really apparent in these next two years. And then, uh, for the parents, how you can support your child at home. So hopefully you'll leave here feeling like you know all of these key points. So, let's look at the obvious one. The difference between key stage three and key stage four. Difficulty, difficulty. Now, I'm glad we've got some students in the room. I did warn the people who got here at the beginning, this is an audience participation event. Didn't put that in the letter, did I? <laughs> right, uh, so students, have you found these lessons slightly more difficult than last year? Hands up for yes. Hands up for no. Thank, thank you for those that, that participated. Come on, there's a lot more of this to come. If you're not participating now, you're going to have to do it a lot more later. Uh, right, so you should start to find it a bit more difficult. Now, obviously, what we're not going to do is we're not going to throw you in at the deep end and we're not going to put the difficulty level right up here. But there is a jump. There is a jump. There is an expectation. This can also be shown in um, the topics that you do and not only that, but the speed of the lesson. So if we're looking here, the intensity of the lessons will increase. Okay? Um, there's a lot of subject content to include. Now, I don't know if you remember when the GCSEs were changed from A star to C to uh, 1 to 9, there was a lot of publication about um, the changes in GCSEs. The government uh, said that there was going to be more subject content. Okay? It was going to contain more. I mean, if the GCSEs weren't hard enough already, they thought, actually, let's make them a little bit harder. So I do feel for you students, I do feel for you, your GCSEs are a lot more challenging than when I did my GCSEs, you have a lot more to cover. And you have to do it at the same time. So what that means is that means that teachers have to increase lesson pace. It means you're going to have to go through content a lot quicker, okay? And that in itself creates a difficulty. So although you may not struggle necessarily with some of the topics, you may find the pace of lessons picks up. Key stage three, um, we construct the curriculum based on the rough guidelines of the national curriculum. And from that, we are able to um, work out pace. We're able to go maybe a little bit slower if needed, but GCSE it suddenly ramps up, okay? And we have a set amount of content to cover because we know it's gonna come up in the exams. So if you don't necessarily feel the challenge of the work going up, the pace of the lessons will. As I said, there's going to be a lot more. Now, with all this extra knowledge comes the need for teachers to test. Now, I know that word is a horrible word, that word test, and you may feel like that teachers do that uh, just, just for fun. You know, why not throw a test lesson? We can sit there at our desks checking emails. Oh, what a lesson it is. But, in fact, a test is really, really important for teachers. Okay, because what it does, it gives us a snapshot of the knowledge that you have learned so far. If you're going at this really fast pace, okay, if you're having to cover all of this knowledge, we can't just go zooming off a million miles an hour and not check the understanding. And that's exactly what a test is. A test or an assessment is checking the understanding. Now what that also means, parents, is when test scores comes home, we need you guys not to necessarily worry too much if they're not meeting their target grade or if they're doing badly. At this stage, the tests are more for us. Okay, at this stage, the tests are more for the teachers. They are more for us to see what they have remembered. Now, if they've done no revision and if they've done no preparation, then please feel free to tell them off as much as you would like. But if they have actually revised, if you have seen them doing work for it, then remember, those tests are more for us. And what that means is that means that if I have, say, a class of 30, and uh, 10, 15, 20 of them, even just one student doesn't perform well in the test, that's something for me to reflect on as a teacher. 
Did I teach that knowledge too fast? Did I cover it uh, in enough detail? Did I allow okay, the students to uh, succeed in this test? So you are going to get more assessments. Okay? None of you are in my um, business class. I was hoping some of them would be. I was going to announce that they have a test next week. Okay? <laughs> that would have been a fun evening for them, wouldn't it? Yes? Sorry to Yes. Do they get any extra yes. support? Yes, they will. It may not necessarily be after school, because after school isn't always the answer. It may be something in lesson. Okay? What teachers are very good at is something called differentiation, which is to make sure that the lesson is accessible to all. Okay? And the student hopefully wouldn't even know it's going on. Okay? That's the best form of differentiation. But there would be something that would be put in place. Yes? Which app would your test be published on? Would it be published? They wouldn't always be published on an app. Um, we don't always publish test scores for this very reason, but it may be that um, you may ask your uh, son or daughter, uh, have you had a test, you know, what's going on in your lessons today? And they might say, I've had a test or I've got a test coming up. Uh, we don't publicise all tests that take place because some of them are simple end of topic tests that are purely for this. Okay, uh, what we usually try and do is we usually keep parents obviously up to date with the term of tracking. And there are some tests that we do put on mock exams and review exams, etc., that go home to give you an indication of their overall progress. But we, we decided as a school it puts an awful lot of pressure on the student if they know that every single test goes home. Because what that creates is that creates a high stakes environment all of a sudden, where you have the added nerves that go with it. So uh, we try not to do that too much. Um, so, like I said, if students don't do well in topics, we then know that that's something we need to address, okay? So, be ready. The message is here, 10. Tests, you're gonna have a lot more, okay? Yes? Just actually, um, at what point would you contact the parents to say that the kid is doing well in tracking? Very good question. Um, it will very much depend on the subject uh, and the, the planned frequency of the tests. Uh, me, myself, I know this doesn't apply because obviously I don't teach your son at this stage, but um, I would usually give it um, a, well it depends, on the, it depends on a few factors actually. I wouldn't necessarily have a numerical value, it would be as well how they're performing in lessons. So if, um, if your son, for example, in lessons was very disengaged, was not focused, was not working, and then failed this test, that shows to me that actually in school and at home, they're not an effective learner, and that's when I would immediately be contacting home and saying, right, we need to work together to sort this out because this is a problem we need to sort out now. Um, we can't ever rule out the fact that one test, things can just go wrong with a test. Um, I'm sure we've all been in that situation where we've not passed the test we've actually revised for. And trying to get your teachers and parents to believe you that you actually did revision. My mum still doesn't believe me for various tests and she holds this against me to this day. Um, but we, we do sometimes, and things can happen. So it would be very much on the attitude to learning of the child and then the overall picture that is creating with the test. So if there were two tests um, and really under the target, then it may be an investigation phone call home to say, um, not done well in these tests that we've done, how's their revision at home? They're saying they're doing plenty. Can you confirm that's taking place? Because that's important for us to understand. Does that, does that help? Great stuff. So, there will be a lot of tests. I did think this one would get flagged up with parents, okay? And then you see the look on the children's faces, they're going... <laughs> right, and speaking of which, speaking of which, okay? You've already just started year 10, you've come to this evening, six o'clock on a Wednesday, and all of a sudden I bet some of you are feeling the pressure, a little bit whew, hot under the collar just talking about tests. Now, one thing we are aware of as well is Key Stage 3, Year 9, okay? You're well settled into school. You're not the youngest year group anymore, okay? You know the school pretty well. You've got a lot of little ones coming around. You may be starting to rule the roost a little bit. Um, and then all of a sudden this year, you're going to hear from teachers. GCSE, GCSE, GCSE. You're going to hear from parents. GCSE, GCSE, GCSE. Friends are going to mention in the yard, GCSE, GCSE. We've all got that one friend. I had one at school that would always be talking about in GCSEs. Can you come on, shut up, we're at break time here. Relax, enjoy. Okay? Then, okay, then if that's not enough, there'll be things on the media and social media, news, etc. GCSE, GCSE. And all of a sudden, this starts to ramp up. And it gets even more next year, in year 11, when they're actually happening that year. 
and putting ourselves in the children's shoes, okay, absolutely, absolutely. Bear in mind, they've never had any pressures like this before academically. They never had any pressures like this before. The SATs are completely different. Yes, they have done big tests in terms of the SATs, but they're young children. They're young adults at this stage and really facing um, quite an unnervy time, okay? And the, the pressures of it all. The, the thought of, well, what if I don't pass my GCSEs? What happens then? I have, I've left secondary school. Can I then go on and do what I need to do? If a child fails the SATs or doesn't do well in the SATs, they're still coming to secondary school. That's not a problem. All of a sudden, the pressure can get to them. And I think it's really important for us as teachers and parents to understand this. So, children, you've heard me say it. We as teachers, we acknowledge the pressure that you're under. Okay, We do understand this. But we need you to understand where we're coming from in terms of the intensity of the course and what we need to get through. So... This is my favourite diagram, my absolute favourite diagram, because I think this sums up school beautifully. The reason why you guys are here at 6 o'clock on a Wednesday, okay, on the hump day, is for your children. The reason why I am here, the reason why every teacher comes to work, every teacher gets into the profession, is for your children. Okay? We are here for them, but actually what I like as well is we are there to support you. Notice that parents and school are at the bottom of that triangle, holding it up, okay? Because we are there. We are there to support you. And actually, parents and school, when we work together, when we provide that support together, okay, that is when it's most effective. So that's why I like to say it's the best. Now, what can we do? Okay, now you'll see why I say we in a minute um, when we talk about this. So Brushing Me Academy, what is the school going to do? Well, first of all, we're going to teach them, okay? We're going to teach them with some outstanding lessons, some high-quality teaching. Teaching is uh, scrutinised, evaluated um, an awful lot at this school. And honestly, I can say, having been to other schools, having observed lessons there, you know this already, it's why you wanted to come to this school. This is one of the best institutes of education that you will find, okay? The teachers are incredible. And you go into lessons and you see such amazing teaching. I know some of the students we sat there going, are you sure about that? <laughs> honestly, honestly, okay? You are, you're very, very privileged. Um, but we're also going to train them, okay? We're also going to train them. We're going to help them prepare for these GCSEs. Uh, parents, I don't know what it's like when you did your GCSEs, but when I was doing it, there was none of this. You were taught the lessons, all of a sudden, bang, there's GCSE. Good luck, kid, off you go. Okay? But we're actually gonna help you, we're gonna help you prepare for this. You might not appreciate that preparation because it will involve things like mock exams, etc. But we are here to help you and we're just gonna support you with that. And we are here to look after your mental health, okay? As you've heard me say, we do understand the pressures, we do understand um, what that all entails and we will do our best to support you. And then parents, what we need you to do is guide them, okay? To help them, to understand them. Okay, that's a very difficult challenge. Uh, but we need you to understand where they're coming from, we need you to understand the pressures they face, and then support them with their mental health as well. Okay? So, train them. You've already had this. You've already had the first part of this training. Right now I'm seeing some of the look on the children's faces, because hopefully they remember exactly what this is all about. You knew. You knew. Where's this from? It's from an assembly. It's from an assembly. When did I give you that assembly? Yesterday. I mean, I love how people said Tuesday like it wasn't yesterday, okay? <laughs> yesterday. What's next? Are you sure about that? Yeah. I mean, right now your parents are looking at you and they are you know, they're judging you a little bit for this. Right, we're going with red. Are we sure? Now, right now, your parents are very impressed. <laughs> this is the winning one. Ooh. We've got a brown, we've got a black. We've got a very confident black down here. Right, what are we going for? We're going for black, hands up. We're going for brown, hands up. Well, it's interesting, I was looking around to see if any parents were getting involved at that point. Black. 
Right. Now, if, uh, do you know what? That was impressive. That was impressive because that was from um, you know two day, uh, well yesterday, but very much yesterday morning. So we're not far off, forty eight hours away. Uh, now, what was the whole point of this? It really, really adds the impressiveness to this. Yes, we remember the colours, but what was the message behind it? Because right now your parents are thinking that I just put colours on an assembly and just got you to go over them. What was the meaning behind it? What was the meaning behind it? Why did I get you to remember colours? Why did I get you to remember colours? What did this show? Did you find a train there? Yes. But how? What was the whole point? To remember. But how did we get to remember? Yes. Retrieval practice. Retrieval practice, exactly what you've just done now. Yes. But what did we do to make that ingrained? How come you can, most of you can remember those colours? Yes. Repetition. Repetition. Perfect. Perfect. Repeating an action again and again. So, in assembly, I mean, parents, you're going to wish you were there, because what an assembly this sounds. They were chanting colours. They were chanting colours, repeating these colours over and over and over again. Then I took it away and then I tested them, okay? And then I tested them again today. And actually what that will have done is that will have helped remember those colours in that order by just testing themselves again today. And what that was showing is that was showing exactly what effective revision is. Not the, not the colours, the method. Repetition, 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 retrieval. Repetition, 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 retrieval. And that's key. So, mental health. Okay, let's talk about this, because uh, we touched on this a little bit at the beginning. Right, it's been a tough few years. It's been a tough few years. Um, I loved some of the comments as you guys came in, okay, and the conversations we had, especially yourself, we said about how nice it is to be back. Okay, how nice it is to do things properly. Um, so we've had some, some difficult, difficult years, okay? Some of us have had some very difficult years uh, with the COVID pandemic, and, do you know what? I stand here very confident, feeling that, yes, you guys lost some learning time, but I actually feel confident that you are ready. I don't feel like you're behind. I stand here, genuinely, hand on heart, feeling that the school did a very good job and that you worked very hard to make sure that we haven't lost, okay? That we are ready. I'm not standing here thinking about you guys as uh, year 10, having lost some years of key stage three, thinking, ooh, how are they gonna get on because they missed all of this? I, I feel that we adapted very well, okay? I feel that we delivered um, some good online lessons, I feel that we adapted to bubbles very well, and I feel the students responded to that very, very well. However, however, okay, it's very easy to get caught up sometimes in what you may hear, okay? What you may hear, what you may uh, see, the media, Okay, that will talk about the impact of the pandemic. And if you're hearing constantly about how lost learning, if you're hearing constantly about how you're not prepared, you're not ready, that is going to have a little bit of an impact. Okay, and also what we don't want is we don't want you to have this high pressure situation. Uh, I never forget um, one of my GCSE exams, it was a science exam. Uh, someone in my form, uh, it wasn't a friend of mine, I just knew who he was, got into that exam and literally opened the paper, put his head down. Just couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle the pressures. Didn't pick up his pen once. I was doing my GCSE and just kept looking over, thinking, you know, you're gonna pick up the pen, you're gonna do something. Could not hack it. Could not hack it. Okay, there is an awful amount of pressure that comes with this. Now, first things first. The best way to deal with this is to focus on what you need to do, not on what is coming up. If you sit there and start thinking, GCSE, 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 what about the exam? What about this? What about this? What about this? Too much. Too much. Students, we need you in the here and now. We need you in the here and in the now. We need you in your lessons. We need your mental preparation to be thinking about what lesson you have right now. I want you focused on what I'm saying. And then I want you focused on your first lesson tomorrow. That's it. That's it. Just focus about working hard, revising. The rest will take care of itself. If you work hard in lessons, if you do the revision that we tell you to do, you will be ready. You will be ready. So you don't need to worry. You don't need to worry. You will not have a situation like that. You will be prepared and you should feel confident going into those exams. However, that's very easy for me to stand and say, 
You also need to know that there is support. Okay? This list pretty much covers every member of staff that we have in school. Now, your form tutor, you should have a, a, a good relationship with your tutor now. You've got, I mean, the year 10 team are absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think that you guys have some of the best tutors that we have in the school. Okay? I can think of some of the names right now and think, wow, you are very lucky to have those as form tutors. Hopefully you have that good relationship with them. If not, okay, that's fine. Hopefully it's a teacher in this room that you have some sort of connection with, where you feel comfortable talking to, uh, to them. If not, okay, fine. Maybe your year team, Mr. Bardoli and his team. What a fantastic year team you have. Again, hopefully you feel that you can have a conversation with some of them. If not, you have your senior leadership team, which I myself am a part of. Okay, you have Miss Barwell, okay, you have Mr. Loha, Miss Bland, myself, Miss Muggleston, etc. Okay, all these people that hopefully you feel comfortable talking to. If not, we have this email address. Okay, we are in a technological age. Some people don't always feel confident having those face-to-face -face conversations. You can reach out and somebody, somebody, safe at Rushy Dutch Teamer, okay, will help you and will respond to you. But the key thing is, we need to know, if you're struggling with something, please come and talk to us because we can help you. And I know if your parents were stood here, they would say exactly the same. Please talk to us. Okay? And that's a very important message. That's a very simple message, isn't it? Talk. Talk. The more we talk, the more we understand, the more we can help. But you never know, thought you'd hear this in this presentation. So important. So, so important. Okay? So, so important. I had one student last year who came to me before the GCSEs and she was very upset. I said, sir, I'm revising. Nothing is going in. I said, right, tell me what you're doing. I said, right, well, I'm finishing school. I'm going home. I'm eating. And then I'm revising. I'm doing that till 11 o'clock at night. Then I'm going to sleep. Then I'm setting my alarm at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm waking up and I'm revising and then I'm coming to school. Madness. Absolute madness. I said, Th there's a problem. Give yourself a good, don't do anything tonight. Stop. I want you to do no work tonight. What do you enjoy doing? Tell me what you enjoy doing. Do that. Your homework tonight. Do that. Okay? Do this. Sleep. Get yourself eight, ten hours worth of sleep. Because then your mind is rested. Okay? Then your mind is rested. Being able to switch off is so, so important. Now, don't get me wrong. My mum still has a good, uh, when she talks about my GCSEs, tells me, you were always on a break. Okay? Funny that, isn't it? Okay? And you, you know your children better than we know them. Okay? Now, it's interesting. I always find this funny doing this evening, seeing some of the dynamics. Because there are some parents that look at their child when I say, time to relax. And they think, yeah, you should relax. And they, they look at them nodding, saying, listen, listen. And there are some that stare at them like, you do far too much of this. You do far too much of this. Switch off right now. Okay? Um, but it is important. It is important. Okay? It is important. What we don't want to do is we don't want them to burn out. We don't want them to forget what it is to be a young child. We don't want them to uh, not enjoy the, the experience. Yes, it's going to be tough. But make sure they're giving themselves that time to switch off. Whatever they need to do to relax. What I will say is if you're playing a game on the computer and you have to do a rage quit or you have broken controllers from throwing them across the room, that is not relaxing, okay? I often say to my uh, other half, I say, oh, I need to relax, I'm going to watch the football. That's not relaxing. If you knew that my team was Liverpool, you know that's not a relaxing experience right now, okay? So... That's not me switching off and unwinding, that's me getting more stressed than I was in the first place, okay? So, find something that helps you relax and unwind. And there's easy ways to manage that stress. The more organised you are, okay, the more planned your time is, the more structured your time is, knowing what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. One of the worst parts that I found from my experience of the vision is we were told by school, go and revise. Well, all of a sudden, you've got 10 subjects in front of you, all these books, what, what, what you do, when, how, what, then? Okay, you don't know. Plan a time. Plan a time. We'll come to this later on. Okay, but plan a time. Then also plan time to relax. 
Find time to unwind. Plan when you're going to go to bed. When I say go to bed, I mean go to sleep, not lying in your, uh, in your bed, on your phone, okay, to the early hours of the morning. Nothing is happening at 3 o'clock in the morning that you need to be up for, okay? Turn them off and go to sleep. When I speak to some people and they say, what time do you go to sleep? Well, 3. What are you doing? Just on my phone. Why? Why? There is nothing happening at that time that you need to be awake for. Um, talk to somebody. If you are starting to feel anxious, if you're starting to feel concerned about anything, please talk to somebody sooner rather than later so we can help. I wish that girl would have come to me sooner who said that she was doing that routine because I'd have stopped that a lot quicker. Um, and then finally, plan, like I said, plan what you're going to do, when you're going to do it. The more organised and structured you are, you'll find the more relaxed you are. It sounds strange, okay, it sounds strange, but have you ever had a weekend before where you thought, I'm going to do this, this, this? but you haven't set time, you're going to do it. And then all of a sudden, the day ex escapes, and you're left with the evening thinking, oh dear, I've got all this to do, and now I've not got the time. Whereas actually, if you said, right, I'm going to do this at this time, this at this time, this at this time, it would have been so much more relaxing, so much easier. So, um, we have some study skills videos to help. Mr. Bardolia has put the, these together, they are excellent. Um, they are also on YouTube, however the video on those does, do, does work, okay? Uh, they are short, uh, I think no more than three minutes. They are animated, they have subtitles, and they really help with organisation, uh, they help with planning, they help dispel wonderful myths. When I say wonderful myths, my favourite one, I work better with music. How have you ever said that? No, 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 no. Right, I'm going to dispel this logic for you, okay? Music. The reason why you think you work better with it is because you enjoy the music. It makes it bearable, okay? It makes it bearable. That's why you like the music, and that's why you say you work better with it, because you're giving yourself something nice in the background. It's like I used to say when I was at uni, oh, I work better with chocolate. Of course you do, because you're busy stuffing your face with something nice that makes you feel good, okay? But actually, how can you possibly concentrate fully when you have the music on? Because how many of you find yourself singing or rapping along? I mean, put your hands up right now, because we all do that, okay? And then I bet some of you, that singing turns something into a dance move of some sort, where you're moonwalking across the bedroom, okay? It's impossible for you to give 100% to something if you're thinking about something else. So, music. No, 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 no. Okay? No, 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 no. And if you don't believe me, watch the video. The evidence is there. So, revision. Okay? We've spoken about this, and I've touched about this a, a few times. How to revise. Okay? Uh, my best friend, okay, he thought the revision was making everything colourful. He had highlighters. He had post-it notes. Okay? He had, he had glitter. What he did with it, I don't know. Just poof on his work. That was his revision, okay? That was his revision. No, 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 no. So, this, okay? I showed this to your children, I'm showing this to you now. I genuinely, this amazes me every time I look at it. Because actually what this shows is how easily we forget things. So, your lessons today, your lessons today, pretty soon, you'll have forgotten 20% of what you learned today. Now, if you weren't concentrating on that lesson, have you really got that 20% to afford to lose? Okay, that's the thing. This is if someone is focusing 100% on their lesson. If they're doing other things and doodling and messing around, have you really got that capacity to lose? Um, but then think about Monday's lessons. Monday was two days ago. Look at this first curve. By two days, okay, you're less than 70% of the information. That's incredible. But actually, by going over it again, by reading up on it again, you go back up to 100% and it takes you twice as long to forget. That's astounding. That's absolutely astounding. Okay? That just from reading over it, that's five minutes, reading through your book about what you did that day. And all of a sudden, you're back up to 100%, it takes you twice as long to forget it. That's why you remember the dots. That's why tomorrow you'll be able to remember the dots. 
That's why uh, on Friday you'll still be able to tell me that dots sequence. Wow, I wasted some brain space on you there, didn't I, with those dots? But the point is, that's the theory, and it works. Repetition, 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 okay? To help with this forgetting curve. Now, how many of you have said in lesson, we've done this before? I mean, I'll put my hand up with this, because I remember my lessons I used to say this. We've done this before. Let me guess. Keep those hands up if you've done, said you've done this before, or thought we've done this before. I mean, there are a lot more hands up. There we go. Right, keep your hands up if you've then not concentrated fully in lesson. Well done for your honesty. I mean, that takes a lot of honesty. Because again, your parents are there looking at you like, are you questioning the teacher? Are you not working hard? So, well, well done to all of you that are very honest there, okay? Well done to all of you that are very honest there. But, in fact, good. We want you to feel that you're doing things again, because you are. Because you are. We are having some lessons where we're going to revisit some topics. And that is all to stop you forgetting. That is all to help you with this. If we just taught you something once, told you it once, and then never came back to it again, you're not going to remember it. So, in amongst all that GCSE content we have to cover, we're also planning when we're going to go over topics again. Okay? That is in there. That is part of the planning. Okay? So, you need to make sure that you're concentrating in those lessons for both. Okay? Read over what you've done. Get into that good habit of either at the end of that day or the next day, taking your books home and just having a read. Having a flip through, what did you do? What did you do in maths? What was it? Was it percentages? Just have a quick look through. Okay, have a quick look through about all that. No more, just have a read. Just have a read, without music on. Just have a read, okay? And just refresh that memory. So there's your first part of the revision. There's your first part of the revision. Read through the material. Now, your brain. Okay, I told you this in the assembly, didn't I? What a wonderful thing. Takes in so much information. Takes in so much information. Can any of you remember the tie I was wearing yesterday? Okay, you should have forgotten that. Okay, I had to think then. Okay, but anyway, you should have forgotten that. Your brain should have said, I don't need to remember that. Don't need to, not, not interested. Okay, not interested. But it takes in everything. I always use the analogy of a conversation. When people are, are talking around you, you often end up tuning into those conversations, don't you, and hearing what's been said. My other half is terrible at that. We'll be talking in conversation, and someone might be having a conversation, you go, shh, I want to hear what they're saying. Okay? Um, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's something that can happen. Okay? Just imagine when you're watching TV and trying to have a conversation. There's me trying to listen to the game last night, and my other half is talking about how her day was. And when she asked me, were you listening? Yes. Yes. Okay? But it's terrible when you've got things going on at once. But your brain is taking everything in. It's in there somewhere. But what that means is that means it has to learn what to forget. And we don't want it to forget the wrong things. So we need to train our brain what is important to keep. I have trained you that those dots are important to keep. I'm going to have to untrain you on that one and never show you them again. Okay? But I have trained you that, to remember those dots. And that is exactly what revision is. Now this doesn't happen once. You can't go home tonight, read through today's uh, lessons, and then never look at it again. It is something where you have to do it again, and again, and again, and again, because repetition is key. Thank you, well done. Key. Repetition is key. Repetition is key. Yeah, we're getting louder slowly. We're getting louder slowly. Right. So, this... This is exactly how the brain works, okay? You hear something, see something for the first time, you either forget it, you either push it out straight away, or it goes into your short-term memory. Now notice that, short-term, is not going to last forever, okay? It's then gonna be forgotten eventually, unless you go back over it, okay? unless you go back over it. And then doing that loop again and again and again is where it goes into your long-term memory. Now, I believe when you guys were in year seven, I did a presentation to you about learning. Didn't I use the example of the children's programs that you watched when you were kids? Anyone remember that? 
maybe not, can you remember it? So, how can we still remember all these things like children's programmes when we were younger now? At 35 years old, how can I still name all the Power Rangers? Okay? It's because I watched that show over and over and over and over and over again. That information was repeated again and again and again and again. Imagine walking into a GCSE with that confidence. If you said to me, um, there's a GCSE paper on the Power Rangers, uh, do you want to do it? Yes. I would, yes, I'll have that qualification. You don't need to mark it, it's a grade nine, I'll tell you that straight away, okay? That confidence, imagine that. But it's the same process. It's the same process. So, retrieval, okay? All we need to do is need to remind ourselves of it and then we need to train our brain to pull it out when we need it. So, test yourself, okay? This is the next key part of revision. Not only is it about reading through, it's about testing yourself. That's why we do the tests. I started by talking about the increased test. We need to see what you can remember. Can you get that knowledge out of your brain when you need it? Okay, when you need it, can you call upon it and pull it out? That is key. So by doing a combination of reading, reminding, testing. Now that testing doesn't necessarily need to be a full pass paper. That testing can be done in different ways. Okay, I taught some of you in uh, last year in year nine. How did I start all my lessons? Start a quiz. Surely you haven't forgotten the start a quiz that happened at every lesson. Okay, every lesson starts a quiz. There's your retrieval. There's your retrieval. Can you pull that information out of your brain? Can you remember it? Now we're going to do this ourselves. We're going to practice this retrieval. Are you ready? Right, let's take a science topic. Who here can remember their science? Good, the parents now. Who here can remember their science? Good. Right. Our topic is, let's have a drum roll, please. Specific heat capacity. Students, can you remember this? Do you know this? Good. I did ask Mr. Stock to give me a science, to a guy, I don't know this, to give me a science topic uh, they're doing year 11. Okay, so hopefully you shouldn't really have done too much of this. Don't help your parents. Okay, right. Here we go. So, I want you to learn this. Go. At which point, no one was supposed to put their hand up, so they put their hand up and go, yes, you, please. <laughs> um, right, uh, next question. Who stopped reading properly after the first paragraph? Yeah, right, now this is, students, look at your parents. <laughs> they had their hands up, okay, they had their hands up. So when they tell you to read all of this, they can't do it either, okay? Now, um, right, this is obviously done for a reason. What do we need to do? It's all very well and good saying read it through, but wow, that's a lot of information. So what am I going to tell you to do? I'm going to tell you to break it down. Let's start simple. Right, learn this. Okay, now we're going to do it together. We're going to do it together. Okay, I said we, we're going to do this together. So I want you to repeat after me. The heat required. Whoa, 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 stop running ahead. Repeat after me. The heat required. To raise the temperature, to raise the temperature. Of, the unit mass of the unit mass of a given substance, of a given substance. by one degree. We're going to go again. The heat required, the heat required. To, raise the to raise the temperature of the unit mass of, unit mass. of a given substance, of a given substance. By, one by one degree. The heat required, the heat required. To, raise the to raise the temperature 
of the unit mass of a given substance by one degree. Well done for nobody running out the door and going home. <laughs> right, so are we ready? Yeah. We've done repetition, we've read it over and over again. How do we test ourselves with this one? Nice and simple. We cover it. There we go. So we've done our revision, we've read, we repeat it, we repeat it, we repeat it. Who's feeling brave? Who's feeling brave? Who thinks that they can do this? Who thinks that they can do this? Tell you what, let's, let, let's, let's take the embarrassment out because right now the parents are really not looking happy because they're looking at me and they're saying, so, you, know, you know, if I can't do this, you've not given me all, no credibility at home. So, right, let's, let's do this together. Well, you can do it. The heat requires. To raise the temperature, go on, keep going. I mean, right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because right now I'm confused from what I heard there. Let's start together, but right, we'll follow this pattern. Don't repeat after me, just, just finish it. So we know it starts off. The heat required. By one degree. By one degree. Right. We, we sort of got there, but what that shows, right, what we've actually done is we've actually done something very, very important, okay? We, we've kind of got there, but not quite. So, what do you think we need to do? We need to go back again, okay? We need to go back again. So, that's where we would look at it again. Now, what we've just done is we've just done revision. We've just done revision. We're doing revision right now. Notice how there's no highlighters, there's no post-it notes, there's no glitter, okay? None of that. It is literally as simple as looking at the text, looking at the text, breaking it down into small chunks, reading it through, repeating it again and again and again and again, and then testing yourself. Now, some of you, when you walked in, said, oh, it feels like I'm back at school. I bet it feels like you're back at school now, because I've just tested you. I've just given you a test. Okay, and I'm sorry most of you failed, but anyway. <laughs> what it means is it means we do it again and again and again, okay, until that is in our long-term memory. Now, I'm not going to sit here and waste all night doing this. This would be something, if you really wanted to, I, I think the video is recording now, so you could actually go back watch this presentation and go to this part and do it again and again if you really wanted to. Sounds like a good Friday night? <laughs> Remember, no music? <laughs> right, so, um, like I said, this was the definition, we do it again and again and again. Now, this was horrible. This was horrible. None of us liked this, okay? None of us liked this. So, what we do is we get rid of it, okay? And we break it down. Now, you might have heard people talk about things like cue cards, okay, cue cards. What is a useful revision strategy to do um, is to look at the information, because some of you will make notes in your books, some teachers will give you some notes to read, etc. Get some cue cards. Now, you don't have to spend a fortune on actual cue cards. Literally, get a piece of um, A4 paper and chop it into two or chop it into four. <laughs> it's that easy. And just write the key points on there. So, instead of this... This can be changed to this. Now this is easier. This is easier to understand. We can revise this. We did the definition. I thought some people were going to repeat it. There's no point repeating it, it was up there. Okay, we did this part. But we can then revise the units. Okay? Joules per kilogram degrees C. Okay, joules per kilogram degree C. We can do that. So we can learn that. We can memorise that. And actually, if you walk past your son or daughter's bedroom and they're going, joules per kilogram degree C, joules per kilogram degree C, they've not gone insane. Okay, they're doing effective revision. They're doing effective revision. And this is something that you can engage with as well. Because actually, just like I have done this with you, if they make the cue cards, if they have the notes, you can actually sit with them and help them. Do it together. Do it together. Make it into a competition. Who can learn a bit first? Okay, if you wanted to, or you could do my job in this and just test them on it. 
But read it through together. Go through it, go through it, go through it. Then take it away from them. Right, can you repeat it? Can you repeat it? Go on, have a go. Nearly, nearly. Well done. On to the next one. Have a read. That is effective revision. Okay, that is what you need to do. So, start now. Right, so let's look at these two. First of all, we have a student that is getting ready to sit their GCSEs. That is what their brain is going to feel like. They've had all of year 10, all of year 11, all the information to the max. Do you want to start revising at this point? Imagine all of that. Like when I was at school, we were told the revision was something you started like the Easter holidays of year 11. You've got all your books from year 10 that are probably under the wardrobe somewhere that you've got to fish out and go back through. And you've got all the year 11 stuff to do. Nightmare. Whereas if you start now, you've only got this little bit. Not even that. The actual amount of year 10, I couldn't really show as a visible graphic on here. Okay, you've had a week, two weeks. Okay, start learning now. Start learning those key topics now. Because if you can get what you've done in these last few weeks in that long-term brain, long-term memory, you don't have to worry about it. You'll be able to test yourself really easy. Maybe remind yourself next month and it will still be there. So start revising now. Because that workload is much easier to revise than this workload. Okay? So, what I need you to do, I said this in assembly, homework. Why is homework so important? Right, now you just don't want to say it because you know that if you say it, you acknowledge it in front of your parents and your parents have a go at you for not doing your homework. Right, homework is so, so important because homework and revision go hand in hand. Let's think about this. You have done the lessons. You've finished the lessons. Hands up, how many of you do the homework the night it's set? Okay, well done. Why am I saying okay? Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm a teacher, and I'm saying it's okay, just okay to do the homework the night it's set? What do I really want you to do? What do I really want you to do? Providing you have the time. I want to do it the next day. I'm going to do it the next day. Because you've had chance to forget. You've had chance to see what is in your long-term memory. Because you, on that forgetting curve, by doing it the next night, you've had those 24 hours, okay? You've had those 24 hours. By doing that homework, you're going to have to read up on the topic, okay? Then you're going to have to do whatever retrieval may be set. Sometimes... The homework is very simple, to read through something, to look over something. More often than not, it's some sort of questions to answer. But to answer those questions, how many of you have sat there doing homework and not looked at your book for answers when you've been given questions to do at home? I did all the time, okay? It feels a little bit like cheating, because obviously you don't get to do it in lesson. But notice how the teacher doesn't tell you, don't look at your book. And is the teacher there hovering over you going, cheater? Okay? Of course not. Of course not. I have absolutely no problem if people use their books to help them answer the homework. My question isn't going to be, write down what's on page three of the book. Okay? It's not just repeating it. It's trying to get you to apply the learning, apply the knowledge in a different way. So actually reading up on the material and then trying to do your homework, perfect. And wait a minute. So if you're telling me that homework is reminding yourself and retrieval, homework is revision. Because that's what I told you to do for revision. So homework is revision. It's not the only revision. It's not the only revision. No, 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 no. When your parents say you're revising, so don't, so you can't say, yes, I did all my homework. That's a part of it. It's a part of it. But it is essential. So, right. What we don't want anymore, you're in year 10, we don't want any of these consequences for not doing homework, okay? There's another difference between key stage three and key stage four. Key stage three, you get a consequence, I didn't do it, I forgot, dog ate it, something like that. You get your consequence, move on, that's all right, okay. No, we're, we're, we're more grown up than that now. We understand the importance, we understand the pressures of key stage four, okay? We understand that, we don't not do our homework now because we recognise how important homework is to revision, okay? 
incredibly important. So, it's rarely set the next day. In fact, it should never be set the next day. We, have, uh, we said at our SLT meeting last night, in fact, that we are going to make sure that all staff understand they do not set homework for the next day. So if you get homework for the next day, children, please come and see me, and I will sort that out for you. I'm not going to go and tell your teacher off in the middle of the lesson, obviously, but I'll make sure that that doesn't happen again, because it should never be set for the next day. Okay, there should be at least two days you to complete it, so you could do it the day after. All right? Um, we want you to have the chance to forget and then to remember it. Okay, this is called space learning. You may have heard this. So, we know the reality. We know you don't want to do it. Okay, we know that you don't want to do your homework. You've had five lessons at school. You've been here from half past eight till three o'clock. You don't want to do any more. But, okay, we do understand that you don't want to do it, and I, I always like this. What's important to your parents? Grades. Grades are very important to your parents, okay? Your parents like numbers. They like high-grade numbers, okay? Because high-grade numbers mean academic success, okay? And academic success means that you can go on and achieve whatever you want to do. They've seen, they, they see the big picture. They've done it themselves. They know, they understand. So actually, when your parents are, go and do your homework. No, you're not PlayStation. No, you're not doing this. No, you're not going out now. You've got to do the work, you've got to do the work. They're doing it because, actually, of you. Because they want you to succeed. They want you to do your best. But parents, we understand that that is usually not the motivation for students. What are they thinking about? Well, they're thinking about maybe some sort of game that they're playing at the moment. Because, let's face it, that game of FIFA is just life or death. Okay? And if they don't win that game, then everything's gone wrong. Uh, they're also thinking about their phone. Okay? Their phone. The most important thing in their life is their phone. Okay? Is their access to everyone that they know and like, and access to people they don't even know but like. Okay? Life exactly, exactly. Um, Netflix, streaming, okay, this is massively important. Having, the, having watched the, the in-trend series is hugely important. Because if you come to school and you can't talk about it, what are you going to talk about with everybody? And then finally, the bit they all get very embarrassed talking about, because obviously that is very important to them at the moment, okay? And any love interest that's going on, you might not even know about it, but, you know, there's some, someone special for them out somewhere, okay? Um, and right now, you're looking at them, and they're all going bright red about, no, no, okay? Yes, it is. Um, but that's what's important to them, and do you know what? That's fine, okay? That's fine. We're all the same. Okay, we're all the same, we all had similar things to this that was going on when we were at school. But it's important that we both understand where they're coming from. Okay, where they're coming from, what is important to them. And actually, parents, we can kind of use this to help us. Now, homework, okay, what I need from you parents, you need to keep an eye on Satchel 1. Have a look and see what they've got. Have regular conversations about homework and about revision. How's it going? Okay. Tell me about this. Talk to me about, uh, about what's going on here. Can I see it? Oh, there's a scary one for parents. There's a scary one for parents because I'm looking around the room and I'm guessing no one is a qualified maths, English, science, uh, MFL, DT, arts, uh, business, computers. You know what I'm getting at, teacher. No, I didn't think so. Okay? Which means that actually, students, you could really scare your parents because if you go to them and say, can I have help with my maths homework? You might watch their face go. No, no, we told them and we tried to help them and they said, oh, grown up, leave, leave us alone. And we know we, what we are doing. Well, exactly. You know, I always say, I can help you because I'm a pharmacist. Amazing. And, uh, I always try to help her and she said, no, no, I can do it by myself. Don't sit with me. But if you are struggling, do make sure you talk to the parents because although the parents might not be giving the answers, what they can do is they can apply logic reasoning to help you get the answers. So just a simple question. Have you spoken to your teacher? Of course, why not? Okay, go and speak to your teacher, okay? Well, let's have a look, okay? Let's have a look. Um, you said you've done your homework. It doesn't look like much. There's a four mark question there and you've written one word. Is one word enough to answer? 
you get four marks. Uh, look back at your book, this four mark question, you had to write this much. Do you not need to write a similar amount for that? Now trust them. If they say, yeah, that's what it needs, that's all my answer. Why not trust them? Because actually, if you turn around and say, well, liar. Okay, that's not helping that relationship. But if they get a consequence for not doing enough homework, you'll see it. We send all the consequences home. And then it's that conversation, isn't it? Okay, that wasn't enough. We know, we know next time that we need to do more. Now notice a lot of my language, we. We. Be a team. Be a team. Okay? Um, what's not amazing is when you're like, we're in this together, we're in this together. Why haven't you done this? Why are you doing this? Detaching from it. Okay? We're in this together. We're in this together. We. School, parents, students. So, how could we do better next time? We aren't doing too well in maths. What can we do to improve? Okay? Can, you can put this on them. Can you go and see the teacher? Or we need to talk, there's the best one. We need to talk to the teacher. Shall I do it or shall you do it? I wonder what's gonna happen there, okay? But actually in fairness, the student may feel more comfortable with you talking to the teacher, okay? But again, remember it for the teacher, it's a we conversation. Why are they failing in maths? <laughs> okay, how can we help? How can we support them, all right? It's very much that we culture. Uh, this is an example of the timetable that I mentioned. This is an example of the timetable that I mentioned. Uh, having some organised, structured time is really, really key. Now, you know your, uh, your children better than we know them, okay? When they leave this building, we have no idea what they get up to, really, okay? Unless you tell us. Um, now, your child may be one that needs to get on with their schoolwork as soon as they get in. They're in the school work, my, uh, work zone, they just need to keep going and then have a longer rest time in the evening, okay? That's how I work. That's how I work, I stay here as long as I need to get my work done, and then when I'm home, I'm home, that's it, okay? But some of you may feel more comfortable having that rest, having that downtime, and then coming back to it. You also know what you have on. Do you have any sports clubs? Do you have any music lessons? Do you have any extra tuition anywhere? And plan that out. So if you notice, on Tuesday, there's a piano lesson. On Thursday, there's football. Less is expected. Less is expected on those days, and then make it up on the other days. That's fine. If Tuesday you end up doing nothing because you've got gymnastics, ballet, and football, I have no idea what you're preparing for with that for this extracurricular schedule, but whatever it is that you've got on, you know this and you know the time. Don't give it up. Don't give it up. Just know that, that gets made up somewhere else. Now, what I like about this is look up Friday. Golden time. Golden time, it's on the timetable. Look at this guys, golden time is there. What a thing to look forward to. What a thing to look forward to. 6 p.m. on a Friday, golden time. Do you know the beauty with golden time? It can be taken away. Oh, they all suddenly looked at me then, didn't they? They're going, yes, 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 what? Okay, now, golden time can be used like a little reward. Okay, golden time can be a reward. You follow the timetable. Okay, you follow the timetable. You successfully complete all your homework and you get that golden time. You see the consequences, monitor them as well. Okay, but again, keep that we culture. I notice we've received consequences, okay, for homework in. What can we do about it? How can we do that better? Let's try together, let's try adjusting this. This maybe isn't working for you. Let's try doing your homework earlier. Let's try doing it when you get in from school. Keep your uniform on, don't get changed, because actually studies show that staying in things like a school uniform, you're still in that mindset, still in that zone, so you can work uh, more efficiently. Keep your uniform on, sit at the table, get that done, then we'll eat, then we'll relax, then you'll have your rest time. Again, please notice at this point that it doesn't say on this timetable, stay awake till the early hours of the morning. Okay, make sure that you put, yes, you hear me right, a bedtime on there. Okay, because you need eight to 10 hours sleep. Okay, you are growing young adults. You need eight to 10 hours sleep. Okay, so make sure you put that on there as well. But monitor it, okay? And I say, check the work. 
Can I see the homework? Let me have a look at it. You don't need to understand any of it. Just nod. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because actually, you're showing an interest. And there's a topic you don't understand, like specific heat capacity. <laughs> We're not going down there again, don't worry. Um, Say, so tell me about this. Tell me about this topic, because they should be revising it. So tell me, uh, see, in science, you've got this. Tell me all about this. You don't have to understand a word of it, okay? But you actually have the book there where it has the information. You're testing them, and they don't even realise it, okay? So actually, you're helping with that revision. Now, I mentioned about the golden time, using that as a reward. You know your child, you know what they like to do. Now, sign a contract. Sign a contract. I'm being serious. Sign a contract. But it. Write up a contract. Put it on the fridge. Put it somewhere. Make a copy so they don't take it down and tear it up. Uh, tear it up. But write a contract. And, right, students, you're going to like this part. You get to negotiate this. If you get in every day from school and you do all of your homework, okay, you may put in there that you can allow one consequence for homework because sometimes genuinely mistakes can happen. So you might put one in there, that's fine. But you come in, you do your homework, you do your revision, okay? You do it all without your parents having to nag you, tell you off or anything like this. It all gets done at that time, you follow that timetable, then you get a reward. Now, that could be two, three, four hours, whatever it is on the PlayStation, uninterrupted. Uninterrupted, they can't nag you, they can't tell you off, it's in the contract. It could be that you get to decide takeaway on Friday. That it's what you want, it's not what your brother or sister want, it's not what your mum and dad want, you want pizza, you're going to get pizza, okay, it's what you want. So you can start to negotiate, what do you want out of this? But, parents, this is when you get to negotiate, if that is not done, if I have to nag you once, if you get two consequences, this happens, you know that lovely mobile phone of yours? <laughs> That's mine for the weekend. And this is the thing, it has to be, it has to be a deterrent, okay? It has to be a deterrent. If uh, my mum when I was at school had said to me, uh, well, okay, you won't get to go outside and play then. All right. Do, oh, I have to stay in my room, do I? What a shame, where my TV and PlayStation is. Yes, that's a punishment, okay? It's not, it's nothing. You know what they value, you know what's important to them. Put that in the contract, because don't do it. Because what better motivation at five, uh, uh, lesson five on a Wednesday, when they're struggling with concentration, thinking, oh, really, really want that pizza on Friday. Okay, to push through. To help push through, to go, no, I will concentrate, I'm not gonna get that consequence. Oh, it's homework, I really wanna do it, but I can't moan, because if I moan, I lose my phone for the weekend. Things like this and get them to actually sign it. Draw this contract up, you both sign it. So students, if they say, oh, I was only joking about like letting you do whatever you want all weekend. Tough, it's in the contract. Get a lawyer, you've got a contract. You've got a contract, they've signed it, it's there, it's clear. Okay, um, yes. Uh, good question, very good question. Um, right, what I would then encourage to do is start uh, thinking um, what could happen as a result. So, the physical takeaway is there anything that, uh, that, you, that they do enjoy doing that nothing at all? You can't unplug the internet for a day. Um, right, if there is nothing like that, then use the resource that you have and use it us. So, actually, if you don't do this, I am going to be notifying the school that this hasn't happened. I'm going to be notifying about this. I'm going to tell them in advance, okay? And we can together come up with some sort of system for that. And it may well be that we set up, uh, they are um, called for some sort of study club, something like this, because if we don't do this, then we will make sure that we do that. So that's where we can support you with it. So if there's generally nothing, okay? If there's generally nothing whatsoever, have that conversation. This is important, with this contract, sit down and talk to them, see what they say, but there's always something, and we can help with that. And have you ever thought of homework should they be getting 
We are actually working on this as we speak. Okay. Um, one thing that we're aware of is we're aware at the moment that Rushing Me doesn't have a, um, a homework timetable, so to speak. So teachers are told in each subject roughly how much they should be setting, but we're aware that actually on, say, today, they could get homework in every single lesson. Okay, we're changing that. We are in the process at the moment of putting together a timetable where subjects will set it on a certain day, due for a certain day, so that we are managing the amount that each child is given, and it's nice and clear for us and for you, the homework expectations. Realistically, um, we would be looking at them to be doing homework, and this was um, a, it's a genuine timetable for about two hours, hour and a half, okay, per something day. like this per day. Per day. Now, what we also are aware of, and it's a next study that we're going to be doing with our curriculum leaders, is do we actually understand how long it takes students to do homework? What I mean by that is the lessons that we learned from COVID and the um, online learning. Okay, we were told to set an hour's learning or half an hour's learning. Some students, that was taking them an hour. Okay, now, is that because of laziness? Possibly. But actually, we're going to do studies to look and see what, how long work should actually take. Homework is something we're really focusing on this year. Um, what you need to do is, uh, if you get homework and it's taking you more than two and a half hours, don't just stop after two and a half hours. Get it done. Okay, but we are monitoring this. And we are aware of this because we are aware, as I said at the beginning, of the mental pressures, we are aware of the expectations. And what we don't want is we don't want our students getting home, working all night, going to bed, coming to school, working all day, working. That, that's not what we want. Okay, so it is something we are looking at. But as a rough guide, one and a half hour, two hours, yes. Are you including revision within that as well then? No. Right, okay. No. Um, revision is, revision could well be a bit of homework that the teacher says. Now I said it goes hand in hand. In terms of revision, because I did think people would ask me how much time, at this stage, if you do 20 minutes a night, that's all you need. At this stage, just 20 minutes a night is fine. Okay, so if you've got two hours homework, 20 minutes extra revision, that's less than two and a half hours. Okay, if you start at five, finish at 7.30, go. Okay, that is the expectation. What I don't want at this stage, I don't want you guys to go home, this is very serious, I know we tried to have a bit more of a light-hearted uh, time with some of it. I don't want students to be working every hour that they have. Okay, if you have a heavy homework night, if you are starting homework at six, you are finishing it at nine, okay, don't do any more revision. Because your revision is taken care of in that homework. Now plan your time. When I say plan your time, make a timetable. Allocate time for when homework is going to be done. And think about the lessons that you have. So what lessons did you have today? What lessons did you have today? Hey, geography, right, right, geography. Anything else? Science, English, maths. French, okay, wow, it's a heavy day. Okay, so, um, if, if that's what you have, if you have geography, science, English, uh, maths and French, um, right, what I would be doing is I'd be saying, remember I said, we don't like doing it, ideally don't do homework the night it's set. You know what's coming up, so let's say tomorrow you've got all your clubs, you're probably gonna have to do that tonight. You've been here, okay, you've been here, I've taken up your time, in fact, I've gone over time even, but uh, you, Oh yeah, uh, 10 minutes, my apologies about that. We're having so much fun. But um, my point is you had this evening, so make the adjustments, okay? Make the adjustments, but um, try and think now, I have homework and then I have this 20 minutes revision. Don't work any later than nine o'clock. Do not work any later than nine o'clock. Remember, homework is part of revision. So if you don't get a chance to read through what you did in lessons, no problem. Okay, because you will have done homework, you will have refreshed on those topics. Okay? If you're working for an hour on homework, an hour and a half, then do that 20 minutes revision. Make those cue cards. Okay? Make those cue cards. Read through things, test, etc. Really try and make sure you balance your time. What you will have from me over the course of this year and next year is I will be explaining to you through assemblies, through information going home, etc. 
and through the study skills videos that we spoke about, okay, um, exactly how to start structuring your time. And as the information from homework comes out, which is coming out this half term, okay, it will be out on set this half term, so be ready for that, parents. It will make things a lot easier with that, but that is an area that we are improving on, okay? Right, um, the only part for me after that was these last <coughs> tips for success, okay? Um, what is incredibly important is sleep, as I said before, eight to 10 hours a night. Diet, fruit, veg, balanced meals. Now, that takeaway is wonderful. That big, nice pizza, that lovely kebab, all this sort of stuff is absolutely fantastic. But how do you feel afterwards? Tired. You feel lethargic because of all the saturated fats in it. Your body is doing its hardest and working overtime to digest it. So actually, during the week, a nice, healthy, balanced diet, okay? Plenty of vegetables, plenty of fruit, etc., is really going to help. Healthy body, healthy mind. Um, exercise, okay, exercise. Exercise doesn't have to be you hitting the gym, okay, going to beast mode, lifting as uh, big a weights as possible. Exercise can be going for a walk. That relaxed time can be just going for a nice walk around somewhere there's a family, okay, whatever it is, but going out and getting that exercise. Uh, reading, reading is a wonderful way to relax because it can take you somewhere that you've never been before, it can completely help your mind switch off. But find the right genre. What do you enjoy? Okay, what do you enjoy? If someone puts a book in front of you that you're not interested in, that's gonna completely switch you off. So find something you are interested in, okay? Um, and then know how to relax. Some people don't know how to relax. What calms you down? What calms you down? There's, there's your homework for tonight. What calms you down, what helps you relax? If you don't know, try things, find it. Could be a nice hot bath, okay? Could be nice to relaxing music. Again, if you've got someone screaming at you through your headphones, Okay, that's not relaxing, okay? Find something that does relax you. It could be doing some sort of craft, whatever it is, but find what relaxes you. Have we achieved this? You're probably all extremely tired now because I've gone 15 minutes over what I originally advertised. Do we know the difference between key stage three and key stage four? Yes. Thank you. Do you feel that you can cope with the mental pressures of key stage four? A slightly less enthusiastic yes, but we said that yes there. Do you know why revision is so important? How to do it? Yes. That, was, that was a good one, yes. Okay, and then parents, do you believe I have equipped you to help support your child at home? Yes. yes. Thank you. Right, thank you ever so much for listening. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Have a safe time. Thank you. In year 11, we do yes. We don't do it in year 10. In year 10, it's a bit more light in touch, but in year 11, they just start, they start straight away. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you. Thank you.